uh, we started our journey in 2007 and 2008 and from very beginning we had very organic traction from UAE uh, probably because there was no tax <laughs> it is very uh, uh, you know uh, very few countries uh, where it doesn't have a tax the moment you have tax you, are, you need approval from accountants and we are trying to convince accountants here that yeah it works <laughs> so uh, we had very organic traction, I think, uh, from uh, UAE region for quite a long while. Uh, but I think we're pretty late to have a ground presence. Uh, but now with partners and uh, us also coming over, uh, it was only last month we came for the JITEX and I think we had a uh, experience as to how wide a community is and we decided to do this event. Uh, so I think I there's no need, I think, I think Esther has introduced me already. So I've been with Rappe uh, for almost 1.5 decades now. It's like a, it's like a home for me. Um, one of the co-founder, and uh, this is our team in Mumbai. We're a group of uh, we're a team of 60 people, uh, breaking it all the time for you guys. <laughs> uh, so the just just a quick glimpse of the journey. Uh, it was started by Rishabh Mehta. The whole show. He is a he is a hobbyist programmer. He started coding when he was in class six, and uh, he had a family business uh, who did furniture, hospital furniture manufacturing. So uh, naturally he went into production side of thing and he did his masters from USA into production engineering. He came back uh, to show some returns of his uh, MBA probably and uh, started making an ERP solution for his company because there was a very you know, bad implementation of ERP in this business. That's how his ERP journey started. And to make uh, an ERP product he ensured that there, there is, should be a framework. So before making an ERP solution actually he made a framework that at that point at that point of time there was no Frappe, there was no ERPNX as a brand name but he had started working on framework in 2005 itself right and uh, later on of course then 2007 and 8 Frappe happened and uh, yeah using framework we started making ERPNX as an application so uh, I think uh, ERPNX has been our flagship product which has it is a very uh, you know it's also a problem and a benefit uh, that it's way too uh, generic in nature. It works for a manufacturing business, it works for a distribution and, uh, and a services business also. Right? Whereas other ERPs, it's very, very industry fo focused and you can say it's an advantage and it's a dis disadvantage at the same time. But even because probably uh, we used Frappe framework which is very generic in nature, we made an ERP solution which is very generic in nature and works for multiple domains at a time. And where currently it stands, we have survived for 15 years and uh, we have 5000 plus customers on our hosting because it is open source so we don't know how many customers actually and yeah, we have a team of 60 people uh, maintaining it uh, actively and when it comes to ERPNX as I said it's not a product for one industry uh, it's actually 10 products probably bundled into one uh, one product so you have accounting which and accounting is connected to buying and selling module you have CRA module, you have human resource module which is very very crucial uh, for companies uh, and you have loan module right uh, which also connects with uh, accounting so it's very tightly integrated in that sense. Uh, and who uses the ERPNX? Uh, you'll hear it from the customers need I say. Uh, we have some prestigious customers who will be sharing their journey but Zeroda is like one of our premium customers. They are one of our uh, early adopters. Uh, and eventually also investors in uh, Frappe. So uh, it's, it's the largest stock broking firm uh, in India, right? So uh, and they have billions of rows, database rows in their ERPNX account. And all of it is happening on using Frappe framework. Right? So they are uh, pretty big customers of ours. MR, uh, need I say, uh, but one of our partners will be sharing their journey. Reliance is one of the biggest private organization in India, publicly listed, I'm sorry. So. Uh, uh, they are also using ERPNX in some of their subsidiaries. So why Frappe? I think the biggest question, you have Voodoo, you have SAP, you have Oracle, you have Ramco and what not, right? Why, why uh, is there a scope for Frappe? Uh, is the question I will try and answer in this particular presentation. The biggest differentiator we have is open source. This is 100% open source, no gimmick, uh, no, you know, uh, uh, there is no catch here, it is 100% open source, you can go to github and you can see the source code for yourself, be it Frappe, be it ERPNX, the source code is publicly available, 100% open source, as per your need, you can download it and deploy it anywhere, anytime you want, right? so there is no catch here. 
and uh, just to you know give you some analogy i think there's quite a few people from the accounting background so to help them connect uh, how dubai's model and open source model connect you know so in dubai i think uh, uh, in, in, i'm sorry in before 1967 i think dubai was nothing more than a village into farming fish farming right forget about it being a global city it was not even a city it was a village which was doing farming but the the way it became a global city and what it is today you know uh, thanks to the rulers uh, they actually opened up the economy and they invited people from different countries uh, to you know come here build their build their career build the build the companies and uh, uh, now we know uh, you know it's it's, a, it's one of the biggest global city uh, across the world you know and that happened because they formed the community first they opened the gates they allow people to bring in their money and invest and look, uh, build money for themselves and also for the community and pretty much the case is with uh, open source product also we have we have uh, opened our doors by making the source op open source and that uh, has allowed so many people you know right here in this room have already played around with frappe and erp linux and that's how you build a community first right and take it forward so uh, it's not controlled by us Uh, we are the maintainers, of course. So we are uh, trying to uh, give our services and also make some money around it, right? But uh, it's actually owned by the community, you know, uh, is is what we can say. Uh, and uh, when it when we talk about ERP is an open source, you have many options. Of course, you have SAP, NetSuite, Tally, uh, as the accountants love Tally. It's it's a good uh, piece of software, of course. Uh, Freshworks, ERP, next right? Uh, where we stand. Uh, is open source of course none of these applications we talk about is 100% open source we can argue about kudu uh, but yeah uh, when it comes to 100% open source i think the apex is only one part of it stands out and uh, with open source of course uh, there is no licensing fee so you don't have to pay per user your customers doesn't have to pay per user uh, that's a, that's a one big advantage you have why you should consider frappe and the apex right so that's one uh, differentiator we have apart from that it's framework based so uh, when you subscribe for an erp you don't actually get or only get uh, erp next as a product you get the entire capability of framework right and that's actually offers the flexibility when it comes to customizing and everything which i'll try and show hands on into into one of my test account uh, is all is all possible because there's a framework which is enabling uh, lots of functionalities of erp Right, so uh, that's other differentiator which other softwares wouldn't provide you uh, if you go with them. So just to give you uh, an example, just like we have uh, uh, Android application, and on Android application you have multiple applications which can be built. Similarly, you can imagine Frappe framework to be an uh, uh, Android equivalent, and just like on Android platform we have multiple applications. Same way, using Frappe framework we have built ERP next, we have built HRMS. there is hundreds of application built by the community on the marketplace and then there is also custom applications which you guys can build as per your need right but it's all running on frappe framework and then you have customers uh, you know so uh, customers can opt customer they want erp next and marketplace app because they want some integration which is available made by one of the partners say the customer be might want something else right so it's all like customer can pick and choose uh, what exactly they want So uh, Frappe is now no more up only about ERP Next. Of course, ERP Next is basically our flagship product. Uh, but at, as a company, we are not just making and maintaining Frappe and ERP Next. Okay, we have a separate product called HRMS. Uh, we are making a new product called Wiki. We are also trying to make a very ambitious product called Frappe Drive, which will be equivalent of Google Drive. Okay, uh, so which will allow you to do a collaborative document management. Uh, file management and what not we have already made a beta version of uh, frappe crm which i'll try and showcase in few minutes and we are building frappe inside so everything a company needs we are trying to build uh, an open source alternative for it and all this product which we are talking about are already 100% open source and again uh, coming back to the ue story how it aligns uh, i think it, uh, last month only while i was here attending jitex i discovered coders at q and i also discovered ue codes kind of initiative which is announced by the government uh, uh, of ue and different emirates right and they are actually trying to inculcate the uh, practice of coding uh, you know and uh, development 
using platform. And I presume, I, I believe that Frappe framework can be a one strong, uh, uh, you know, very uh, impressive tool they can really consider. So uh, this again aligns with the direction uh, UAE uh, as a community is going. So when it comes to open source, uh, it's free, uh, you know, we feel like, uh, okay, uh, we got it for free, but when it comes to deployment, it's a, it's a nightmare because there are so many dependencies, what is Ansible, what is database, which database to use, which, which hosting platform to host on, what is Linux. Uh, but to make it easy, we also provide a Frappe Cloud, right? So I'll also come to Frappe Cloud as to how we monetize it. But all this thing bang we are talking about, be it Frappe framework, applications, customers, you know, all of this can be handled on Frappe Cloud, which is again our product for the deployment. And uh, uh, the good part about it or an announcement is basically you now Frappe Cloud uh, also offers uh, inst uh, hosting of your ERPNX and Frappe sites in UAE, right? Because I think there's, there is a regulation that you can't host uh, your data outside, ER uh, outside UAE. So uh, now uh, uh, we have this option. You just go to Frappe Cloud and uh, you can sign up. And when you create a site, you can choose uh, your uh, country as UAE and you will get a hosting locally on Frappe Cloud. And uh, again, because it's a community driven application, we have 100 plus applications hosted on Frappe, uh, Frappe Marketplace. This is all from you guys, right? For discovering Frappe uh, as a platform and making different application or integration. Uh, and uh, once we review, we we'll do a quality check and we publish it uh, on the marketplace so that everyone can use it. And if you host on uh, if you host on Traffic Cloud, you can pick marketplace apps very easily from the UI. Right? And marketplace, uh, I'm sorry, Traffic Cloud also offers your networking. You know, uh, as to uh, which all dependencies and applications you are using. What is the current version? Is there a new version available? Should you upgrade? Because people are very skeptical about being on the older version because there are vulnerability issues and you know to which your site can get exposed and there are analytical tools as to what is the uptime what is the downtime and uh, what is the different different applications you're using the backups can you uh, for how many uh, backups were installed uh, and where is it stored and you can also install your own backups and stuff like that so uh, again uh, it doesn't matter if it is free if it is available online you can install anywhere unless it is quality product right you're talking uh, or ask the customer or partners actually what really is working for you and is it a free and open source and they're like no it, because it is a quality product right? of course there are issues and i won't claim that there are no bugs of course uh, it's, it's a part and parcel but we we try and ensure quality uh, uh, of the software so we are iso certified company we are iso 9001 and 27000 24001 certified uh, so the deployment practices uh, followed in uh, ERPNX, the hosting practices is also ISO certified, right? And uh, when we talk about FAST application, specific, specifically with accountants and those who are not, you know, kind of very technical know-how, they believe that because code is open source, their database will also be open source, you know, and there's a security threat to it. No, that's not the case. Uh, the code is open source, whereas when you are, when it comes to your data, your customer data, your sales order data, your invoice data, of course it's on a dedicated server which has multiple security layers on top of it, right? And uh, if I talk, ask you about like which which open source of applications you are using apart from Frappe and ERP, of course, which which open source application you guys have used? Anyone? Linux. Linux, nice. Okay. How many here use Android? Android. Right? Many people use Android application, but they don't even know that Android is an ac actually an open source application, right? So the the proliferation of open source is already a widespread, but we just don't know. For example, servers. Ninety five percent of servers in the world actually runs on Linux, and it they run on Linux because Linux is open source, and because it is open. We have all, all, all of us are actually looking at code and reporting security vulnerabilities, you know, uh, in the software. And that's how it becomes robust and robust and robust because of the community support. And similar with us, of course, since our code is also public, people actually review the code and report vulnerability issues and we fix it. In fact, we also incentivize them. We give them bounty and whatnot. Right? So uh, if you just go to frappe.io slash security, you'll find a proper page from with the, where you can report the vulnerability issues. So open source, because it is open, uh, it becomes more secure for everyone.
but when so when installed it on an application of course there are uh, application and security layers so it doesn't become it doesn't ensure your data leaks out so and when it comes to information up, up, this is all technical but when it comes to information we you, you want to know, know more about let's say mumbai or delhi or dubai which side we go to which side do we trust not google uh, wikipedia right someone said wikipedia because again this is not managed by one company this is a community driven thing you can go to uh, dubai and i can i can go to you know dubai's wikipedia page and add some graph, uh, some bad thing but other people in the community who protest and you know say this is not the right thing and you have to provide references and everything because it is community driven it is so robust and comprehensive so uh, yeah it's crowdsourced pretty much like open source community driven and peer to peer review makes it even more robust and well referenced and again uh, what i keep telling to our customers and our team members also is basically when you do an implementation probably software is like a 20 30% of it what actually really matters is basically what users want what end users want those who will be making invoices those who will be making sales orders and uh, you know uh, making entries they want a software which works they don't care about open source they don't care about iso certification they want a simple to use software right uh, and this is again where we stand out uh in the history of open source application i think wh why there's no acceptance of open source of application like it has it should happen is because of ease of use because design needs investment right and now even now we are paying actually designers separately to give us the design which end users can easily understand i'm not saying it's on par and you know uh, but once you understand that how customer forms work other forms are very similar with sales order sales invoice purchase order purchase invoice you know so we we are rated pretty well on the ease of use and uh, i think that's one reason why end user also like us so yeah uh, again uh, people keep asking if everything is free uh, how do you you know make money is there some catch there has to be some catch how can you make money on open source so uh, the simple thing is basically we don't money make money on open source like i said it's 100% open source we make money around open source by providing services so any company who who would be using product product is free but hosting support implementation customization services is for which customers are ready to pay we charge for hosting and support uh, uh, as a maintenance and we leave implementation and customization to our partners completely we don't dive into uh, these services we have left the ground open for the partners so in the context of uh, frappe again code uh with code we get partners because only technic those who understand tech becomes our partners and frappe partners then offer these services to the end customers be it hosting support customization and implementation and i think many people are building their businesses around it so need i say more about it so we have partners in uh, ue uh, thanks i would like to call out craft interactives and uh, cock cyber systems uh, for arranging this uh, event uh, quick shout out to them i think thanks thank you it was it was due for last 15 years and they they finally made it happen and apart from that i think we have 100 plus partners across the world uh, who are offering their services on erp next uh, and eventually basically now erp is like a notion right there are so many things and you can easily get lost so we also started offering frappe school uh, where we teach uh, our partners also and we also teach and customers who ever want to learn and uh, we keep doing batch we we also started doing in person batch and we also do online batches so we have some batches coming uh, in uh, at the end of the november anyone who want to sign up i think can check frappe school and uh, here i'm coming with the hope uh, to i think uh, arrange uh, in person frappe framework training how how many of you would be interested if we, if we do an in person batch here okay. easily easily 10 to 15 people try so uh, yeah but i think because we are open source and free and you know i am very miser <laughs> uh, i would love to find some subsidized place if you guys can help find some subsidized place uh, i am very 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 keen uh, to uh, before i go back i want to go back with this assignment of uh, frappe framework in person training happening in uae so if you guys can suggest some subsidized place please please uh, get in touch and propose something apart from frappe uh, and building product uh i think we do 50% of work rest of the 50% of time we do all crazy work like we have a policy of pick your own pay everyone in the company decides their own salary right so it's it's very crazy as an idea 
because we trust that everyone is intelligent and they know what is their worth. So rather than someone or boss deciding uh, what should be their salary, we let people decide the salary. At the same time, they have to submit an SOP and how much they would deliver and stuff like that. Uh, pick your own work uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we are trying to be democratic. So we do uh, lots of voting on the proposal. Uh, we have a zero plastic policy. So uh, maybe some other time to talk about it. So yeah, Shukran Jaza. Yeah. Your biggest clients running on which degrees? Uh, yeah. So it's MySQL and I think uh, there's also uh, uh, they they are running on MariaDB. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Mongo. Uh, uh, Maria MariaDB. Yeah, yeah, single instance. So uh, I'll tell you uh, a story about a customer basically. Uh, they had uh, 1 million invoices to be pro uh, processed in a single day. Every day 1 million invoices because it's a sort of a, you know, Talabar kind of a company when they have a, a, a small, small transactions happening. Uh, so it, based in India, of course, not Talabar itself. And what uh, we did is basically uh, uh, we did an integration with their current application. And through a background job, actually, we, we started con the, uh, consuming the source file or the JSON of the invoices. And in the backend, we, we would process the sales invoices. And with the single database, uh, which uh, we were able to scale it up to 1.5 million invoices in a day. Yeah, so, so it needs, but it does need uh, an optimization, of course. That's where we came in. Of course, I won't say really just plug and play and it will work. But uh, we had to do some optimizations, of course, to make it work and uh, turn off the validations and field which you don't need, so that your uh, you know in the background you can process more invoices. Are you going to talk about Frappe UI? Frappe UI. I'll show some products uh, which has been developed using Frappe UI. So my next talk will be about that. Uh, the person behind you. Uh, first, we'll come to the way. Second, what I like the most is not the product alone, because I like it. But more the values you mentioned in the previous slide. Oh wow. Yeah, you mentioned about democratic and... Uh, Can we talk about it in Dubai? Yeah, well, in the policy of the company. Hmm. So my question, why don't you ask the community, why, why don't you let them uh, vote on what goes next on the next release? So oh, that's a smart, big question. Excellent, excellent democracy, and uh, eventually you want to get your, you know, your stuff in. So, uh, why we are surprised what goes in the next release? Mm -hmm. We can definitely uh, do better as as to you know uh, what should be our roadmap. Actually, you are talking about roadmap, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, you must have seen in the slide, pick your own work, right? So we have some rebellious kids. Uh, who basically want to work on their uh, on their instincts and stuff like that, uh, but we are we are trying to basically come up uh, with roadmap in some structure going forward or, or for the last one year at least. Uh, we uh, only UI and UX was our focus. We didn't add lots of new features. Some new features were added, of course, I'll try and enhance, but that was also optimizations uh, and normalization of something which was badly implemented earlier. But our very focus uh, going forward is has been uh, UI and UX only. When it comes to implementation of baking features, I think partners are able to do pretty good. Do you expect to see some sort of a portal we will go to what you want to see in X or so? Is this doable? Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's not, there's no harm in asking, but who will build the cat? Uh, that's the question. So uh, if, if we can't get it implemented, I won't ask a question. You know, once we have a bandwidth and a framework to uh, get the implementation done then we would. Or till then what I would suggest, leverage open source, give it a form of Frappe application and publish it on the marketplace. Nothing holds you from that. It, it might happen that someone else is also working on it, uh, which we can prevent, but at least you have uh, you know something out there uh, through Frappe app. So that would be a better approach for now. We are here, please. Uh -huh. I've seen that 
this help is actually slightly different, just like uh, they have been done a great job in the cloud solution and having a video call and the uh, only office also for modifying the uh, door. And now you just start talking about one of the tools that Google Drive, yeah, Flapper Drive. Flapper Drive. Now this is something that already built in another tool. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, just an idea. Why are we reinventing the wheel? As an open source community, it would be better to use like an integration branch than any other packages, like a foreign part, not just a company. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it can be just an appropriate application to make it easier to integrate. It's going to like, uh, make it faster to everyone to get a full solution for that. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, I missed your question. So uh, your, your thing is basically, why didn't we just leverage Nextcloud, give it a, add a layer on top of it? And uh -huh. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, of course, so we, have, we all the time we actually leverage uh, what is already available as an open source. For example, the... Yeah, yeah, so of course, of course. So, I mean, for example, Python and JavaScript and all this technology, of course, we have used uh, because it is open source. And that's again one more... Uh, I mean, you know, fundamental that uh, because Python was there and JavaScript was there, we didn't invent it. We could actually make something like graphic framework. Is the is the argument uh, here? Uh, we first had an XCloud integration. I think one of the partners also in the community did does it. Uh, it's just that, uh, and even even in XCloud, of course, we have used the third-party libraries. You know, so it's not that we're trying to do everything uh, ground up. Uh, that has been done, uh, but I think uh, we, we actually want to provide a complete tech stack uh, and a product stack for the companies who can use it. There is always, uh, of course, alternative which will be there. Can we make a better alternative is the question. <laughs> that's, that's where the money is. If <laughs> someone will have to migrate, someone will have to implement and scale up. So. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thanks. I have one more presentation uh, which will be more hands on. Uh, I can leave and let me continue. So, uh, where is the presentation? Priyanka. Question. Or question. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, just uh, to pick your brain, uh, on code of ethics uh, for partners as far as open source is concerned, I think. Uh -huh. uh, attending one of the events in Mumbai a couple of years ago. Okay. And Rishabh had mentioned that, uh, but it's just to brush that off, uh, code of ethics on, on open source. Uh, okay. So yeah. So, so if you can brush that off, what, do, what did, does a company expect from the partners mm -hmm. uh, as far as that goes? So uh, mm -hmm. is it accessible? But if a partner in Russia creates <coughs> something, mm -hmm. and what, is there any sort of code of ethics that, uh, that Frappe has? In place. Uh, so I think some in enforcement happened due to the license itself because the RPNX is a uh, JNU license and JNU license enforces you uh, to open source your extension. So if you are building something on top of the RPNX and if, if you are caught then we can actually send you a legal notice. right? So some people have actually white labeled the RPNX and uh, we actually send them a first takedown notice, right? not the legal notice itself because we don't have a legal deal. <laughs> So uh, take on what is what, uh, and uh, the second is basically um, uh, MIT license. So Frappe framework is not JNU license. Frappe framework is MIT license, and that allows you to basically make a closed source applications. Okay, that need not legally uh, make you enforce you to basically make everything open source. Uh, we tried a lot in the conferences. We had to have very you know emotionally charged discussions about uh, people not contributing back. But then we realized that we use Python and JavaScript ourselves, and we hardly give it back. <laughs> so expecting people to leave their own business of building that, taking care about their customers and profits and you know cost and everything and giving back, uh, it's it's actually a privilege, you know, keeping your business aside and contributing to open source. Of course, you get bound, uh, brownie points and whatnot for that, but it's actually a privilege. You should have a time because time is money, right? right? So it needs more time. So uh, some people uh, and some mostly the partners basically do contribute back. Uh, we have some contribution guidelines and we do reject lots of contribution requests, but there is a path available and quite a few people actually, you know, I think some people from Kraft uh, and Cox Cyber also make contributions and we have accepted it.
but yeah, we have given up on enforcing everyone to contribute because they can contribute, but maintenance is then becomes our idea. So their code quality and everything is like not good. Keep it to yourself. There was a challenge. I, uh, the reason I ask is uh, uh, the reason I ask is one of the customers we were working with, and they had the same thing. If I'm paying you for customization, uh, why should my competitors get that? Hmm. Because it's our, uh, mm. it's for us. It's for I wanna, yeah, I have heard it. You should tell them basically you are getting 99% of the that's ERP for free because someone else contributed. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we told them. So, yeah, time check for me. So, I'll have to jump to next presentation. So, as I said, uh, ERP Next has been our flagship product, but there is more to uh, ERP Next, uh, more than ERP Next in the Frappe, and that makes it a Frappe worse. Uh, as I said, these are the products. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly start with the Frappe framework, uh, and we'll will actually have it hands-on. So those who are who are not from the accounting, I'll just try and basically uh, build something, uh, build a very very basic doc type. I think those uh, who actually already understand it, uh, they they'll find it way too basic. But those who are like accountants or something like that, I think it will be relevant for them. So I just go to my Airpinex. Uh, website. Uh, now I'm signed up as a customer user. So yeah, uh, as a customer, you can also let your customers and supplier actually access to the your Airpinex account. So they can see their sales order and purchase order right into your Airpinex account. And you can build the complete website right from your Airpinex account. I'll quickly switch uh, to Airpinex and I'll try and highlight some of the new features which you have implemented in Airpinex. So uh, I think. Uh, so we, we, someone was talking about Frappe UI as a project. So we actually have a Frappe UI uh, as a new project, uh, which actually gives you a components. Uh, on top of it, you can make a new product. And so I'll, I'll show you the product. I think this won't be interesting. So uh, using Frappe framework, actually, uh, you can do a lot. For example, Dubai is not a standard workspace, right? But I could make a new workspace uh, very simply, you know, by creating a new, new workspace. And if I want to add something, I can you know simply click here. What do I want to add? I want to add a chart. Which chart I want to add? I want to add a, let's say sales order trends. And what should be the label? Say <coughs> SO trends. So for the company and for the customer, actually you can build a re very very relevant charts. You know as per your need, and it will and. So, for, for, for example, if someone is into oil industry or someone is into furniture industry, you have to actually talk the language of that industry, right? If you just say sales order, purchase order everywhere, no, it's very boring. But if you just talk that language, so with this workplace, you can actually add a chart and give it a name, right? And uh, making it relevant for them can actually help you crack uh, the users also. Uh, now, let's come to the most, most important feature, doc type. So uh, let's say uh, we you have the registration form right uh, on the website and everyone registered, but it, it is not available out of the box in your Phoenix. And what do you do when you want to make a new form and it's not there? You want to build it from scratch. You go to doc type, new doc type, and you say uh, registration form. Sorry, and module would be let's say website for now, and uh, is submittable. Okay, yeah, and it will be custom by default. Create a new. So in version 15, we have introduced a form builder. Now you don't have to see that ugly uh, doc type form. Uh, you can just say, I want to add a data field. What will be the la label? It will be, let's say, full name. And do you want it to be mandatory? Yes, I want it to be mandatory. What will be the next field? Let's say it will be again a data field. But uh, here I want to have some validation. So this is an email field and I want that if someone is entering email, it should be proper. It should be. It should have at the rate. It should have dot com or something like that, right? And then uh, uh, I also want to add a select field as to go, why are you visiting, for example, right? So uh, it becomes a select field, and here you can add options, uh, fun, learn, time pass. And let's say you want to move this field uh, into our next column because there is an uh, uh, imbalance here. So this goes through your new, new column, right? And then you can also have uh, some fancy stuff like uh, signature, right? So you can add a signature field here also, right? And you save it. 
So in version 15, we have provided this kind of a form builder. So from UI, you can do it. And uh, now we can go to the registration page. Now this is a form which was not there at all in ERP Next, and we have it. Right. So if I just make a new entry called say Nabin Hyde, and uh, if I just say uh, Nabin, and here why are you visiting? I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 that's okay. Why, why should I show? I should. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll just put some signature and save it. Right? It says that Nabin is not a valid email address. Right? So I didn't write any any uh, code. Right? I just mentioned that this field email, uh, this field should have an email. And if I just put frappe.io uh, and save it, it accepts. Right, so simple uh, and again uh, this field uh, full name is a mandatory field. Right, so without this field, I won't be able to. Uh, again, these simple things uh, you can't, you don't need to write a code. And then you also have a save and submit. So if you want to, if you want to basically put up some approval, you can also create a workflow. So uh, what we have uh, out available out of the box is basically you can create your custom workflows. For example, for invoice approval. Uh, what you want is basically someone should make a first draft. Say sales user makes a first draft, then it should go to account manager. Account manager should approve. You know, once it is approved, then it should go to system manager. Yeah. Once it goes to system manager, then system manager should approve, and then eventually it gets submitted, right? So we had a very very ugly looking uh, uh, workflow builder earlier, but now we have this kind of a workflow builder. So from charts, you can actually pick blocks and connect them. You know, so this makes your life uh, very easy. So uh, let's assume that you have applied a workflow on uh, on uh, you know uh, new new form which we have built. And apart from that, you can also use role permission manager because uh, data is like gold, right? So if you have made a new form, a registration form, it's only accessible to system manager. If you want to allow it to say account manager, you can just select account manager and add. And you can say he can read, write, create, delete, but he can't submit because submission remains the system manager. Right? So that's another thing uh, you can easily handle from the UI uh, without touching the code. Right? So once you have it, let's say now we want to submit this form on the website. Okay? So uh, because you, you guys actually went to our website and filled up that form, right? So what we do is basically we have a feature called web form. In a web form, I'll just go and I'll say I want a, a registration form, and uh, it, it also generates the URL. I'll just select a registration form as a doc type and click on Get Fields. The moment I click on Get Fields, it fetches all the all the fields. I'll just remove I mean from uh, from the option and uh, save it, and I'll then publish it. So it also creates a web form for the end customers. So if you want to basically make a make some forms and tools, uh, there's some people standing in the back. I think if you can, uh, and I think there's empty chairs here. If you guys want to come forward and sit. So uh, yeah, let's say now Faris and Sari, and uh, Faris at Rapid.io. Now so this is happening without login. Okay. People can access, uh, uh, do it without login and let's say he is attending for time pass. He can put his signature and uh, save. Right. So this uh, success message which you see is a bit different because it is, it is for the end customer. And if I go back into my registration form, I see the entry for Faris Ansari. Okay. It, 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 it got captured. And uh, yeah, you can also fix the naming and whatnot. It's, it's, it, all of this is possible with a simple configuration. You don't have to touch the code again. So this is a small, 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 uh, maybe 10 minute glimpse of what we have out of the box available. You can also, uh, I'm sorry, but you can also, in, in version 50, we have a website, a for, uh, print format builder. So like for example, if you make a sales order, if the sales order gives you some out of the box print format, you know, like you have a company on the top, you have item description, quantity, rate, amount, and everything. If you want to make a new print format, uh, you can do it all from the scratch. So let me call it a Proforma invoice, for example. So I'm creating a new print format from uh, called Proforma invoice. 
I want to edit a letter head, I want to let's say adjust it on right side, left side, you don't need to write a code for the alignment, you can do it right from here. Change image, change letter head and similarly uh, you want to call it a performer invoice, so I can simply edit the header and you can just change the text to performer invoice here. I mean, I'm I'm not a developer. I have I've done my uh, graduation in management, so uh, but I'm able to do you know uh, show off with you guys this this fancy thing. You don't want this section, just remove it. You don't want this section, uh, or you want to place it somewhere else, just you know drag and drop. Similarly, you can add more columns and stuff like that, and you just save it, and you have a new print format. So this is uh, what what should be the margins. You want to pick some font from Google Fonts. Is all is all highly considerable. So this is all we have on uh, on uh, Frappic. Uh, I'm sorry, Frappic framework side. Yeah. Uh, now going forward, uh, ERP next. Before I jump to ERP next, I would just like to give you the glimpse of Frappe's CRM. Now what you have seen is basically all the forms is very similar in nature. You have fields. You have save button on the top, you have left side column, you have right side column, you have attachment option on the right side, right? But that UI is not actually usable for every use case. For example, in the case of CRM, uh, the sales people actually have to keep tracking their lead and open that lead time and again and track what is happening, what is the status and you know, uh, 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 is it done, not done. So for that, I mean, the different sort of UI is needed. Now what you see or what you are going to see is actually all doc types only in the backend, right? But the UI is different and that UI has been developed using Frappe UI as a project which actually gives you or allows you to make a new UI using Vue.js and it gives you the component so that you can make new UI a uh, lot faster. So I'll just play this. So this is a product uh, which was done by one developer in three months, okay? one developer in three months and we were able to make this beta. So it's not yet launched, we are going to launch it in January. So it has leads, you can track leads, uh, deals and contacts. So this is a call coming in, you see the call coming in. And uh, this is because of the Twilio integration. This is a Twilio integration which is available out of the box. Let me accept and the call has started, right? But that while the call is going on, I am discussing something and I want to track it as a notes. So what I do is basically I drag that call aside and I start taking notes. The moment I start uh, taking notes, I can, that's okay, that's okay, there is no need. Sorry, sorry. So uh, yeah, I will just try and rush it. So you have done notes, done with the notes. Uh, you can also, you know, uh, end the call. Once uh, so once you're done the done with the call, you get the call recording. So call log is also there. Right? You can go back and see what 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 was the discussion between the unknown person and Shari. But now what I'll do, I don't want this unknown. I want to put a name to it. So what I'll do, uh, I'll simply. I'm sorry. I'll simply convert this uh, lead. I'm sorry, con contact into a lead. So that uh, I can, I, I'll know. So right from here, I'll, I'll create a lead. So it, it has linked that call with this lead. It, 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 it will link email, notes, and whatnot with this new lead, right? Which didn't existed earlier. And I can pass all this information into the specific fields. And now, uh, once you have given it a name, then you know basically who had a conversation. And right from here. Right from here, you can actually make a call also, right from your CRM account. You can capture more notes, you can send an email right from your uh, right from your Frappe CRM account. You can update the status to qualified and once it is qualified, then you can also convert it to deal. So it has created a, it has converted that lead into deal. It has created a new record, but all the activity which you did on the lead actually got carried forward. So you have a complete context as to how you converted that lead into a deal. And yeah, you can also uh, put the amount uh, because it's, it's a hot lead sort of and what is the probability and uh, yeah, also upload an image. So this is in the backend is ERP Frappe framework, but in the front end, it is Frappe UI. So yeah, this is, this is about uh, 
the Rapid CRM, which is a new product which will be launched very soon in the uh, in the uh, Rapid verse, right? And uh, so I'll, I'll go back to ERP next because I think there are quite a few uh, people from the accounts who want to see what is available out of the box in ERP next. So. Can we still have the CRM alongside with the ERP next, or is it going to be Is it going to be accessible through the same? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in when in in Rapid Cloud, when you uh, create a site uh, and install application, it's the same container on top of which you are actually adding multiple applications. Okay, but that can be that that CRM module or CRM module. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably hide it for the new users. At least for the new users, we'll hide it because we have a better CRM. So why subject them to old CRM? But it's the same container. Uh, so uh, let's assume that CRM thing happens there. Like, uh, and uh, you have a new order coming in, right? So what you do is basically you go to sales order. Uh, you click on new sales order. I'll select a customer. I'm sorry, I'll have to rush because there's a time check. And uh, I'll select an item code. So of course you can actually have the values in multiple languages. And uh, by when you want to deliver it, uh, how much quantity, let's say five quantity or something like that, and save it, right? So first draft is created right from your ERPNX account. Now in what is different in version 15 is basically we have something called uh, stock reservation. So earlier what used to happen is basically uh, you have a 10 quantity in the warehouse but uh, many people in the different location could, would see that oh yeah 10 quantity is available. And they can actually accept order from the customer but maybe you will end up accepting 50 orders uh, you know or quantity for the uh, order for the 50 quantity but you have lesser uh, in your warehouse. Uh, because everyone is looking at that 10, 10 quantity. So now in version 15, what we have done is basically we have bring in stock reservation, right? So what you have done is basically the moment you make a sales order, it will reserve that stock and no other people, even if it is available in your warehouse, will be able to use it. So that's a new enhancement which we have done in version 15. So the moment I see, uh, I have done this, uh, you know, I can, I can, I can try and do stock reservation. From which warehouse, let's say I want to do it from the finished goods warehouse for this particular item reserve stock and it says stock is not available right and if your stock is not available then what you do is basically you will have to manufacture it of course if it's, if it's a manufacturing item so the another enhancement which we have done in the manufacturing module is basically bomb creator so what you, you, you used to do is basically again you had a top type view from where you would uh, create a bomb and everything but now right from the UI actually uh, or if I can just make one very quickly for example, here I'll say I want it for iPhone 15. Say iPhone 15, I am making a new bomb. I'll select an item code as uh, iPhone 15. I'll put quantity as one and uh, create it. And right from here, I'll just click on it and uh, add a raw material. Okay. So in the raw material, then we need a motherboard, one quantity of motherboard. Right. So motherboard is added. I'll also add, let's say, body, uh, iPhone 15 body, one quantity is needed. And I'll also add, uh, say, screen, touch screen is needed, one quantity per phone. But with motherboard, actually we have uh, uh, multiple uh, levels, right? So what I'll do, I'll convert this uh, motherboard into a sub-assembly and I'll add multiple items called, uh, say, uh, RAM slots. Say we need two RAM slots. And uh, I'll say we need uh, uh, cameras, so two cameras and uh, transistors, say 10 transistors and you have uh, USB chipset, say two USB slots and save it. So now you see the complete hierarchy, therefore iPhone Hansa Ashra, you need a motherboard, but for my making motherboard, you need this raw material and then you also have this item which can be directly used with the, for the manufacturing of iPhone. So this is a bomb configurator from the UI which you can use. And uh, yeah, you have a final product, you know uh, what are the sub-assemblies, what is the explosion item and what not, right? So this is, this is another enhancement we have in version 15, right? So the moment you receive a sales order, Coming back to sales order, and I'll, I'm, I'm sure I go back to the bomb list. 
Is it is it getting very boring? Looks like yeah, it is. Okay, I will try and dash. So I'll go to sales order and uh, back to from where we started the journey. So it it said that we don't have the stock available. So what we do is basically right from here we can uh, request for the raw materials. If it is not available, then right from here we can request for the raw materials. So it will help us. Uh, do you want to include exported items? So it will purchase for uh, this item and also the sub-assembly items in a single transaction, right? And create, right? So uh, as there are sufficient raw material, uh, is not request for required. None. Okay. So uh, there's some which is missing. So what we can do is basically we can simply go to a production plant. In the production, in the so there is something called production plan. In the production plan, what we have done is, is there is an enhancement uh, that you can also basically uh, uh, do it for the sub assembly. So I'll simply select an item. I want to manufacture ten quantity, and I want to uh, you know what are the raw material. So it fetches all the raw material from the bill of material, right? And based on the bill of material, I basically got a material request. So uh, what I did is basically I simply went to I followed this material request which actually was provided from the bill of material and I completed my purchase because this is this status says received right because I have already created a purchase order and against the purchase order I have already made a purchase receipt so this this item which was required uh, as a part of bill of material was purchased by me uh, through a through a purchase receipt so I have made I have completed the purchase and I have also completed the uh, I have also completed the manufacturing process because I made a I made a uh, work order for iPhone 15, which had this raw material requirement. I made the I, I purchased the raw material first. I'm sorry, I'm rushing. Uh, and then we made a two stock entry. Simple two stock entry is basically for the transfer of raw material from your warehouse to the manufacturing warehouse, wherein uh, it's a simple transfer to your stores to your shop floor warehouse. For example, all this quantity got transferred, right? Uh, and then this second entry is actually for manufacturing that all this raw material which you had in your warehouse it got consumed and you have 10 iPhones in the backend but what it did is basically it also created 10 serial numbers in the backend because this item is serialized item which I marked so uh, it did a serial number uh, generation in the backend automatically 15 or 10 serial numbers were automatically generated right so you can actually track warranty and what not for all these items which were generated and now I can go back to the sales order because all these items have been procured. I can simply go to go back to the sales order and yeah, one one sales order which I already had and uh, stock reservation was already done for this item. Uh, so it shows and reserve or something like that. So uh, I can simply go ahead and create a delivery note for it. And in the delivery note, in the delivery note, what you will notice basically though item is fetched, it is showing uh, that stock is not available. Uh, this uh, red indicator right because it is actually querying for the stock from the different warehouse if I just put a correct warehouse say finish goods and save it this turns green right this says that yeah stock is available and uh, in the back end what it has done is basically there is a new improvisation is serial number and batch bundle earlier you had to put 10 serial numbers right here right in the back uh, in the system but now what we have done is basically we have created a new doc type called serial and batch bundle so you can put each serial number in a separate row and if there is any renaming or something like that you know happening for the serial number you can track it in the serial number serial number and batch bundle so that's that's a separate uh, doc type which you can track uh, so that's a normalization part of you know it was handled very badly earlier but now it's improvised and the moment you submit it's delivered right uh, so a stock is deducted so you can see the stock ledger entry you can see the accounting ledger entry uh, accounting major because your stock and accounting is integrated again just for the accountants in ERPNX you have a provision to manage perpetual inventory so if your stock uh, is uh, if there is some stock moment it will have impact on your books of account if there is some transfer happening or purchase happening it won't write away book into expense it will show it as stock in hand account so yeah these are some of the features uh, and you can simply create a sales invoice and on the sales invoice or quotation and everywhere you can simply apply the VAT also right or based on the based on the 
type of item. Some item will be at 5%, some will be exempted, some will be zero related. So on the item itself, you can mention what will be the tax rate applicable and you can simply have tax applied on the, in the transaction. You don't have to worry about it while you are making a transaction. Yeah, so this is a simple multiple company account. So and in, in, in version 15, the additional feature which we have added is uh, is that uh, you can actually uh, like sales invoice is submitted and you want to change some values, some dimensions. So what you can do is basically, okay, so this is the work, workflow being applied because I created a workflow for sales invoice. Now on version 15, what you can do, even even when sales invoice is submitted and you want to change some value, uh, like accounting detail or something, you can come here and you can select some other income account. So let me select the service income for example. So invoice is submitted, so I'm not amending uh, the uh, the whole transaction, but now I just change it and it reposted the journal ledger. It reposted the journal ledger uh, in the backend, right? So uh, this is all about some of the new features which we have introduced in version 15. Uh, coming back to the, uh, I'm, I'm almost done. Sorry, <laughs> enough of tolerating me. Uh, now you have the data and everything, uh, so but there has to be some uh, some insights, right? Uh, the the analysis of the data. Who, who would do the analysis of data? So for that we have uh, uh, introduced a new product called Rapid Insights. It's not actually a launch. Uh, it's been there for almost a year now, which actually helps you get the data uh, from your database query, database table itself. So let's see. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Okay, uh, yeah, so what I'll do, I'll just go to a, I'm selecting a database here. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so I'm just selecting a database table here and I'm selecting another database table or a report, right? So I'm, I'm trying to basically make a joint table query here, group by selection and this is actually a joint table query and here you apply a column, select the columns and write from the UI using two different doc types who have actually made a report, right? So you don't again need to touch the code and uh, you have a uh, analytical tool. And let's say when it comes to visualization, so uh, out of the box we have provided, are you an e-commerce company? Do you want to set up a dashboard for your company? Just link your database, your company and on a single click, it will generate a multiple reports, like it will have a dashboard, it will have a number card, it will have a graphical report, pie chart, line chart, you know, and whatnot. So with a simple configuration, you just need to plug your database and it will give you some reports out of the box. So this is all we have. Do we have two minutes? Oh no, time up. Is this live already? Yeah, this is live. This is live. Yeah, it works with version 14 also and 15 also. Yeah. There's, there's nothing called like 100% bug-free software. So it's uh, but we are there to maintain, yeah. So we are we are maintaining it. So this is all about for me. There is multiple times of slides already showing show, being shown to me, and I'll have to just uh, find a corner for myself. <laughs> so thanks, thanks very much.